Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we're going to be looking at a truck that I feel can be largely misunderstood. Now, this is the iX5003, and it recently dropped to the public on both PC and consoles. Now, the interesting thing about the 5003 is that it can be basically whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be a fairly balanced yet large hauling vehicle, you can make it that. If you want it to be a super crazy over-the-top, like, you know, overpowered machine, you can do that as well. And the main points of reference that make it go either way are the engine options, the transmission options, and of course, the tires. Now, the standard tires actually come with a fairly vanilla-style grip, whereas if you go all the way to the OP tires... They are absolutely wild. They are some of the grippiest tires that you could ever gain access to. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run through some of the options that this truck has to offer, while, of course, keeping in mind that this is an ongoing work in progress that will get updates as it goes along. And then after that, we're going to get it outside and see what it's capable of in terms of actual off-road capability. So, let's fire it up and see what it can do. And yes... It does have all-wheel steering. And you can actually see the steering components. I mean, kind of, anyway. You can kind of see the steering components actually working and actually moving when you turn the steering wheel. It's super, super rad. All right, so let's get it into the garage. Now, in standard form, it's already fairly quick, but you can make it a lot faster. Do not worry. That is not the fastest that this thing goes. So, starting off, you have the diesel starter kit. Then you have the ISX-15, then you have the OP-IX-15, and the OP-IX-Experimental. Now, the Experimental engine is going to be your top-of-the-line crazy engine, whereas the IX-15 is going to be a little bit more along the lines of still overpowered, but somewhat smooth. This one is like if you want to go to space, and that's exactly what we want to do. Now, let's go ahead and throw that in there. And gearbox-wise, you have a pretty big range here. You're balanced high range, off-road, and then you have the IX R&D manual, which is kind of interesting. It's a bit weird, but it takes the concepts of the variable low range and sort of applies it, or at least tries to apply it, to the idea that a kind of kind of a manual gearbox would give you. I say kind of because obviously it's not a full manual gearbox. You're not having an H-pattern shifter or anything like that, but it tries to get you close to the mentality that you would have driving a manual. Next up, you have the SE Special Off-Road, and then you have the OP Iggy's R&D transmission, which that's the one that if you're wanting to just blast through missions one after the other, after the other, after the other, this is going to be the option that you're going to want to go with. So we'll do that. And then suspension-wise, you have the V for vanilla base suspension. You have the OP jacked hauling suspension, which is the same philosophy that that suspension had on the 3880. Then you have the SE hauling active suspension, which allows you to, of course, raise and lower the suspension between the standard height and the raised height. So we're going to actually start with the jacked hauling suspension, basically doing a max build here. And tires-wise, you have the all-terrains, the vanilla IX super singles in 50 67, 66, and 72 inch height. Now, I will say, even though these are more of a vanilla grip tire, I do really like the way they look, and I could definitely, I could definitely advise using them with the lifted suspension if you're not on a map that has a lot of mud. I think it's actually a really good tire. Now, you have these quasi tires, which come once again in 57, 66, and 72, and I think they look awesome. They basically are a reworked, redesigned, rebuilt version of the Tega tires that I think look a whole heck of a lot better. Now, onto the chain tires, they're basically the same thing as the quasi tires with chains wrapped around them. And then you have these. Now, there are a couple of different versions of these tires. You have the, uh, the Rockstack, well, hold on. Rocka Stansky Specials. I had to like slow down for a minute to read that. You have those in 57, 66, and 72 in both SE and OP programming. So basically, you can run these with a, you know, crazy over-the-top amount of grip or a good but not crazy amount of grip. We're going to go with the over-the-top 72-inch rock tires, which are absolutely just wild. Now, you have an SE offline winch. You also have an OP offline winch. And then you have an OP controller friendly offline winch. And that's really important because this one is going to be a little bit more friendly to you console players, which is good. 
Now, let's see. Snorkel-wise, you have the Fender Snorkel and the Cab Mounted Snorkel. We're definitely going to do the Cab Mounted because I want to get it up a little bit higher. I, I would kind of like to see in the future some options of like the Wedge Cap Snorkels so you can get the, uh, the intake point even higher up, but that'll hopefully be something we'll see in the future. Now, frame add-ons wise, here's where it gets really interesting. Now, this list is subject to change based on what we see in the future, but you do have the prototype exploration unit from a recent update to the Peterman, which basically is a satellite dish, and if you're going around through a campaign map and you want to go ahead and just, you know, uncloak an area of the map, maybe you don't have a, a watch point nearby, or maybe you would rather not go to the watch point location, you can actually just activate this guy and it will scan a gigantic amount of the map around you, going ahead and uncloaking any tasks or upgrades that might be in that area. Then you have the PC-320 Heavy Crane, which has been recoded and modified to be able to lift more weight. Then you have, of course, the Log Carrier Front and the LP-4 Log Loader Crane, which will make this thing a fully logging-capable rig. Then you have the Long Flatbed, which can go on the back. The Van Body Add-On, which basically those allow you to kind of mix and match different add-ons, like, for example, the Long Flatbed and the Van Body can be combined together for a cargo and support rig combination. So we're going to go ahead and take those off now. Then you have the logging frame add-on, long sideboard bed, which can once again be combined with the van body for a hauling slash support capable rig. Then you have the IX 5003 car hauler. Then the IX long range fuel tank, the I, or sorry, not the IX, but the LC 3.8 loading crane, settle high and settle low. Now I want to go ahead and focus our time and energy on the IX 5003 car hauler because the car hauler is one of the standout features of this truck. Now, visuals-wise, miscellaneous is going to give us access to mirror frame, fuel tanks, nothing too crazy. Now, rear bumper, we've got the stock mud flaps, but they end up deleting the car hauler if you put them on there, so we're not really going to focus on those too much. Then you have the factory beacons, the roof marker lamps, which you can use with the car hauler. You also have the horns, the visor, the chrome wing, which does delete the car hauler, and of course the amber light bar. And the Bead Max is really the only wheel option that you get when you use these spiked tires. Now, here's where it gets interesting. So, I don't really feel like the camo color accents the, uh, or does the rig all that much justice. Now, if you like camo colors, it's completely, like, all good to run it. There's no, like, I'm not saying it's a bad color. I just don't think it does the rig justice when you see it in pictures or on video. So, with that being said, you can actually go through and adjust the color of not only the rig, but the color of the grill. Because as you can see right here, the grill is currently, like, a glossy chrome red, but if you switch over to like say for example the black and red color you'll see that the grill switches to black whereas the rest of the truck is red same story goes for the rest of these colors now i'm not sure if that's something that puppy master plans to adjust in the future i'm sure he has future plans for adjusting what this truck looks like and the color options that it has but that is what it has at the time of recording this video you can also go ahead and throw beans on the dash which i'm super happy about because really i mean i always like to have beans in the truck with me it's always always a good thing now now, let's go ahead and get this thing out of the garage so I can show you guys what it's all about. Now, the cargo hauling slash vehicle hauling capacity of this truck is one of the things that makes it so special. Now, if I back this up and if I go over to the cargo area, we'll be able to load up some cargo, but what you'll be able to see momentarily is how crazy this can get in terms of hauling. So let's say, for example, we wanted to put cargo containers on the top. So let's see, one, two, three. We could put three cargo containers up there, plus, let's say, drilling spare parts on the back. So that's seven units up top, but it doesn't stop there, because what we can do is we can actually move this truck, and then we'll park you right about here, and we can actually go into the advanced options, use the IX car hauler, and press X to mess with the upper deck, and if we hit the... Oh, come on. There we go. It goes up a little slower when it's got a lot of weight on it, but... Ooh. Easy. So apparently the rear doesn't really want to rise all that much, but that's fine. Just wanted to see if it would rise at all. And it does. It's just got a lot of weight on it right now. Trust me, it's got a big chunk of weight. But now, if we go back to the car hauler advanced options, we're going to do the lower rear ramps. And we can actually extend those ramps and lower them down and get it ready to load some vehicles into the back. So let's get them a little bit further out. There we go. Now they're on the ground. 
and I'm going to go ahead and shut this truck down, and we're going to spawn in some vehicles with the dev tools to allow us to actually drive them up onto the back of the rig. Now, I'm not going to spawn in anything big because I feel like that would kind of defeat the purpose that we have going on here. I'm going to use maybe the 01 Des... Well, I don't know about the 01 Desperado. Let's use... The, let's use the custom 20. The custom 20 would probably be a good test for this. So custom 20, and then we'll also throw the... Mm, I'm kind of trying to find something that's a little bit on the smaller side. Oh, definitely the Traveler. So we'll do the Traveler and the custom 20 to start. Now, the Traveler, the thing about the Traveler is the fact that, obviously, right off the bat, it doesn't really have all that much done to it. We, we're going to need some... Uh, yeah, we're going to need some all-wheel drive. Let's see. All-wheel drive. Let's see. Bruh. Okay, there we go. We'll throw some all-wheel drive on there. And now it's actually refreshed, so we'll be able to actually use it. And that should be enough to drive up onto the, onto the back of the rig. Not bad at all. Oh, no! So we apparently have run into an issue where the rearward-most cargo is actually preventing the top deck from going high enough. There we go. Now, let's see. Let's see if I can actually drive through. Maybe that maybe that relieved the the weight just enough. Come on. Come on. Almost, but it still doesn't want to. Dude, oh wait, I think we're okay. If you're nice and easy on the throttle, you could do it still with the cargo on top. And I believe we have the height maxed out on that thing, so that's about as high as it's going to go. All right, we'll stop you right there. Now it's time to switch to the Custom 20. And I'm not sure how well the Custom 20 is going to do with this, but uh, we'll see. We can only hope. That is still so crazy, though. The fact that it's even doing this. You know what's hilarious? Is the Custom 20 seems to fit better than the Explorer did. Oh, no. Come on. There you go. Light on the throttle, and we're good. That's the that's the most vehicles I'm going to try and fit. I know we could probably try to squeeze more on there, but I really don't want to do that because I feel like if I do try to do that, it's not going to go well for me. Let me see if I can move the upper deck up any higher. Can move it down, but that's about as high as it goes in terms of going up. Okay, so at least we know that the upper deck is maxed out. So now, the lower rear ramps are gonna get brought back in. Oh my god, what are you doing? I want you to adjust. It's pushing them out, but it's not bringing them up! What are you doing? I'm pressing both X and Y, and nothing is happening with the lower rear ramps. Oh no, did I break this? Did I actually break this now? Lower rear ramps. Nope, there we go. Hold on. What? Oh, they won't go any further than that? Oh, there we go. That's a weird glitch that I found or seemed to find. Okay, well, either way, now they're in. That was very awkward and strange. But you know what? I mean, you're working with so many, so many different variables at one time that, like, I don't think there have been any trucks in the past that have worked with at this many variables at once. So now, we're gonna throw a uh, single cargo unit, like, say, for example, an engine assembly. Eh, let's see. Let's find something interesting, but not necessarily too heavy. A cellulose could work. What about service spare parts? Ah, eh, that's fine. Okay. So now, this is fully loaded, basically in terms of the cargo deck and the lower vehicle deck. Now, you can load vehicles on both decks or cargo on the upper deck and vehicles on the lower deck. You just, I just don't believe that you can load cargo on the lower deck. I believe the lower deck is solely reserved for vehicles. But either way, this is a marvel of SnowRunner engineering in every possible sense of that explanation. The actual, like, time and effort that has gone into making this work is absolutely, in my mind, pretty dang impressive and kind of borders on the concept of unfathomable. The amount of work that Puppy Master has put into this creation is just so insane to me. So incredibly insane in my mind. I mean, look at what we're staring at right now. It just, there's nothing that I've ever seen in this game 
that has the ability to do what this truck is doing right now all on a single vehicle. I mean, keep that in mind. There's no trailers involved here. There's absolutely zero trailers involved here. And we are packing, literally, literally we are packing three crates, one unit of spare parts, and vehicles on the bottom deck. Two vehicles on the bottom deck. You could technically play through the entire game with just this truck and never need to use anything else. Really, you could. And that's not even counting this thing's ability to haul trailers. Now, I will say, when you're in full-on double-decker mode like this, it does become a little top-heavy, but I feel like you should be expecting that. With something like this, I feel like you should be expecting that. Right, Beans? Right? Exactly. Now, let's see how it does in the mud with this many things actually loaded onto the vehicle itself. Throwing it into high. Got the shallow mud it doesn't even care about. It doesn't even remotely care about the shallow mud. What about the slightly deeper stuff? It doesn't really seem to care about that either. Now, granted, this is in full overpowered spec, so that does kind of make sense as to why it's not caring about the mud, but look at that. Look at that. That is... That is, like, beyond my wildest dreams of how I thought this thing would perform. Dude, and just look at that. I just... I can't get over how over the top yet, like how over the top yet at home feeling this vehicle is it it's genuinely so at home feeling in this game that like you couldn't i feel like you couldn't find a better op vehicle to take on the game with if you wanted wow all right crazy mud pit it's about to happen come on sending it that's bogging it down a little bit i'm not lifting though I am in high range and I am not lifting and it made it. That is wild. What about what about this stuff? This stuff will swamp almost anything. It hasn't swamped it, but it is slowing it down a whole bunch. Low plus works though. Yeah, low plus it just eats. That is dang impressive, bro. That is so incredibly impressive. Now, seeing as this is a little bit of a different type of vehicle than what I normally test out here, I don't really feel like I would take this through, I mean, you could take it through the dips obstacle, but it's kind of obvious that it's going to make it no problem, but the mud was something that I really wanted to see if it could actually clear or not, and after seeing the way it performed in there, you could just absolutely obliterate regions like Tamir, even with the crazy mud that that region has, in probably a couple of hours with this truck, provided that you don't flip it over, of course, or get it stuck between, like, two or three trees. Now, some trees, this thing is strong enough to, like, literally, you know, knock over, whereas other trees, it has a little bit of trouble. But what I really want to see is what happens when we take it off the good old classic bridge jump. The bridge jump, in my mind, is one of the best ways to test vehicles like this because if it can hold on to its cargo, all of it, throughout the bridge jump landing, you've got a crazy vehicle on your hands. All right, there's sixth. Seventh. Still in seventh. Oh my god! Oh! You know what's crazy is we lost all but one piece of cargo, uh, and that piece of cargo being the Explorer, but it's still driving. And that, I think, is the craziest part about it all, is that it's still driving. But if you guys enjoyed this video and this truck, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.